Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm Darren Ganji with my good buddy, Sean Cole. And today we have something completely unique. Whereas we're reviewing a rocking chair that converts into a sim rig. Not only that, we also got to sit down. I also got to sit down with the inventor of the I sim was rig. Here too. You were here. The sim rig or chair. Also got to talk with his business partner about it. And the chair or rig is called the Omgigo, or I'm sorry, sorry, the company, company name is Omgigo, and the chair is called the GoGo. And normally at this point, we'd go over all the you know specs, tell you all about it. But instead of doing that. I'm gonna hand it over to my good buddy, Sean, who, as we mentioned, got to sit with Colin James, who's the brains or the inventor behind the GoGo. And let's hear what he had to say. All right, well, Colin, thank you very much for coming to our studio. No problem, thank you for having us. And bringing this very interesting sim rig chair. And uh, why don't we start off, why don't you kind of, how did this come to, to be? I mean, what started the idea for you? Honestly, uh, Gran Turismo. I, I'm a Gran Turismo fan from all the way back to the PlayStation 1 and uh, uh, built, you know, years and years ago, built a little plywood rig and stuff for, for racing. And uh, I thought everybody should have the ability to sit in one in their house, race properly instead of having to attach to a coffee table or something like that. But not everybody wants to have a, a sim rig in their living room. So, right. Uh, I wanted to try to give everybody a little bit of both. Uh, something that is a piece of furniture in their home when it should be a piece of furniture and a racing rig when they want to race. Okay, and I mean, most sim rigs kind of come out of a similar mold or I mean, sure. they all kind of start off the same way. This is a completely different direction. Was it just to have furniture? Or was there more to it than that? Well, it's, it's both. It's, like I said, most people don't want to have their entire, you know, six foot by two foot taken up in their living room. Everybody comes over and says, what is that? Um, I, I thought it'd be nice to have something to hide away. I also thought uh, out of all the rocking chairs I've ever sat in, none of them have ever had a comfy plush seat to sit in. You right. know, it's always been a flat back. And, and so we tried, uh, tried the idea of, of doing that and found it made probably a more, more comfortable a rocking chair than any other rocking chair out there as well. It's so. sort of like the automotive guy rocking chair. And I'm very comfortable. It's hard for me sitting here to even believe that this is a sim rig that I'm sitting in. I feel like I'm just sitting in a rocking chair ready to watch TV. Well, that's good. <laughs> Hidden is better. <laughs> now, this is a very intricate design. I mean, I haven't even opened it up yet, but just looking here, I can see all the, the overlapping pieces. How did you come up with the design? Um, I'm, a, I'm a Lego guy at heart and, and learned spatial relation at a young age, but I also spent many years in the 3D world doing uh, animation and stuff for companies. And uh, there's a, a cute little program out there called 3D uh, Google SketchUp, uh, which allowed even anybody to do 3D. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's accurate enough to, to be doing CAD designs. Right. So I, I started playing around with it and that and thought, well, everything seems to fit. Let's take it to a CNC cutter and see right. if we can make it work. Okay, and so this is all individually cut pieces, and did it start off as one big piece originally? Yeah, yeah, it all starts off as a, it's, it's a one sheet of, of half inch plywood and one, uh, half a sheet of quarter, uh, three quarter inch plywood. Um, once it's all cut, uh, it, it can be sent flat pack. It's kind of like a model kit, you know, right. you have to break it out of the sprue and clean it up a little bit and assemble it. Right, now you mentioned plywood, but you know, I know my share of wood, this isn't just Plywood. No, plywood. this is this is high-end furniture, uh, laminated birch. Yeah. So uh, e even the ones that aren't laminated uh, are, are finished birch face, so they're very clean. Right. Uh, people want to, people like to customize. Right. So we have a version that's unfinished, so they can customize it themselves. We also have uh, ones that are pre-finished and smooth, and uh, if they don't want to do okay. any. Okay. Can you just paint that. over the wood? If Absolutely. You have the, the bare one. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the the design. Now again, this is. Very intricate. I'm guessing this didn't just come together overnight. No, the the very first idea for this came up about three years ago. For this particular version, came up about three years ago, and uh, kind of sat on a back shelf. Uh, money's always tight, right. especially for us people who play a lot of video games. Always waiting for that next video game to come out. Um, and uh, thankfully, I got partnered with a a, a wonderful guy who uh, does all the logistics and money and financing. My partner Mark. Mm -hmm. And uh, he helped me bring it to fruition. It, it took about a year of development, but right. uh, we've, we've got it to product level. And how did you guys uh, meet? 
Uh, we met through a mutual friend um, who also was interested in the idea and then kind of put us in touch with each other and said, you know, here's, here's the tool and here's the tools to get it done. Right. Okay. <laughs> now, way back when you first came up with the idea, was it always going to be wood? Um, I, yeah, kind of. I, I'm a big fan. Unfortunately, one of the only things that we still manufacture in North America is wood. <laughs> um, I could get plastic injection, but you're, you know, I want a product that if, if they ever decide to get rid of it, it's not going to be environmentally impact on the other end. Right. You know, injection molding systems and stuff like that get thrown into landfills all the time. Even if this was to throw in a landfill, it would be gone in a right. few months. Now, now we're going to show everybody how it, it opens up, but it's hard for me to even imagine. I'm right now sitting under all my, or over all of my equipment. Yep, we use a, uh, it's specifically designed to a G27 or a G25, um, but we like the G27 specifically because it was one of the first ones out on the market that actually had a hand shifter. And, mm -hmm. but, right. And I watched your video where you, uh, it looks like you could kind of do more than this. Obviously, I'm sitting in it as a chair. Mm -hmm. You can mount up your hardware. I saw you even using your laptop working like a workstation type of yeah, configuration. Yeah, we, we make a couple of accessories for it. We make a laptop tray where you basically you Velcro your laptop to the tray and it locks right into the steering wheel mechanism. Uh -huh. um, keeping it nice and safe. It's really cool because you can fold it all the way open and the laptop stays right there. Right. Uh, even have a cup holder. That <laughs> Gotta love it. that. Yeah. Everyone needs a cup holder That's when racing. Right. If my car's got one, <laughs> My chair better. <laughs> now, are there different variations that are going to be available to people? Mostly in finish form, yeah. Uh, whether or not, uh, like I said, there's going to be a flat pack for people who are into the DIY scene. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's takes a little bit of knowledge of how to put stuff together, but if you ever screwed anything together before, you can figure it out. The instructions right. are very Lego-like. <laughs> Now you save me a ton of time by bringing this pre-assembled, but it's very complicated. So my question to you is, if I got the flat pack version, which I have to put together, what tools am I gonna need and how long do you think it would take me? Uh, tools needed are a screwdriver, some glue, um, you know, you box heads. We use box head screws in them because they're way more attractive than Phillips heads. Um, but most of the hardware that you need for it comes included. Uh, we are in the instruction pack, though. We will have a list of tools needed and right. tools you'd like to have. <laughs> <laughs> it's putting on stuff, details, and stuff like the rubber is the easiest done with like a, a car strap. It's the mm -hmm. thing you strap your your canoe to the top of your car with. Uh, so those are the kinds of the tools that you'd like to have, but it can be done with standard clamps and right. anything that a small wood shop would have. Okay. Now working with Google Google Sketch, which I've never done. Does it just, I mean, is that something you just kind of do or do you then have to go to prototype still to see if it actually works? You definitely go to prototype. As, as accurate as you can be in the 3D world, there will always be something that you did not remember. Right. <laughs> so we went to, we, I believe we uh, ended up with uh, probably four or five solid prototypes before we got to the final chair. Okay, you still have all those prototypes around? You betcha. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of building stuff, I guess. That's right, it's, it's the trophy on the wall or the trophy on the floor. So, you know, we talked about your prototypes and the construction. I did a little research. I watched your videos. I know that the original design seemed to have some exterior screws, and I noticed a lot of people kind of picked up on that and made comments. But sure. But this looks different. Yeah, we, we spent a lot of time uh, through the Kickstarter campaign. Um, you know, we, we got a lot of feedback that, yeah, there's too many screws on the exterior. It doesn't quite look like a piece of furniture. So we really spent a lot of time making sure that the side panels were clear of screws. Uh, screws are done from the inside now. The, the locations of the screws used, there are still screws in them, but they, to me, they add to the detail of the chair rather right. than detract it. This is, after all, you know, about mechanics. Right. So. Now, getting back to that, is that the kind of stuff that's done in Google Sketch, or is that done kind of on the hard It's all done in Google Sketch. I have to, well, it's, it's some of it's done in the prototyping, and then I re bring it back into Google Sketch up and make sure, I, I literally have a file in Google Sketch up that has a count of every screw that goes into this. Right. So. How many screws are there? About 300. Boy, I would never <laughs> have guessed that many. I knew there were a lot, but I would not have guessed that many. Well, then we're hiding them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't see them. So this is the GoGo One, right? Yes, GoGo One Point Oh. Do you have uh, future plans beyond the GoGo One? We do. Uh, there, there's some simplification that we'd like to get in the in the future, but we'd also like to make a, a unit that's capable of also servicing the flight simulation mm -hmm. uh, world. Uh, a yoke, you know, it still will hold all the same equipment, but uh, the steering wheel assembly being a box assembly for automotives. 
um, for a flight simulator, it would be between the knees. Right. You know, so you can put a yoke and everything on. Right. Now, would that be like a different model or is that gonna be like an adaption to this one? That'll be a different model. The adaption to this, the GoGo 2.0 will be basically the same thing um, with maybe minor, a couple of minor tweaks to, to try to lighten it up. Right. And make it easier for assembly. Okay. Um, and maybe there's something you haven't even thought of. Any plans for adapting to other wheels in the future? Absolutely. I, you know, we targeted the G27 because it seems to be, you know, personally, I, I think it's the, the, the best price for the, uh, the best money for the, the machine. Um, but I, I know that there's much better rigs out there. As, as I can look around here, I can see that there's much bigger hardware. Uh, right. But the chair would have to definitely be scaled to that hardware. The right. tolerances in here are made for the 27. Fantastic. Well, I am looking forward to getting this into the rig position and doing some driving. I'm amazingly comfortable. I can see putting this in my living room just to watch TV, but I definitely am looking forward to the gaming version of it. Excellent. Well, it's also a gaming version in the rocking chair, too. If you're, not, you know, if you're playing anything other than a driving simulation. Yeah, a little, can... uh, little uh, Grand Theft Auto with the controller exactly. would work perfectly. Exactly. Well, thank you very much for bringing it by. Thank and you. Uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to driving in it. Excellent. All right. Great job on that interview, man. Thank you very much. It was actually an easy interview because Colin's such a nice guy. We kind of see eye to eye, just that whole builder thing, I think, and it made it a, just a conversation, not an interview. Yeah, I, I, I agree, and that's, that's how, how, it, how it went. So uh, we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, Sean also got to sit down, as he mentioned, with Colin's business partner, Mark, uh, who is gonna tell you about how they got started, tell us about that Kickstarter program that they were involved in, and. Lots more when we come back. Mark, thank you for joining me as well. I talked to Colin a little bit about the construction of this, but I want to talk to you a little bit more about the company, Omgigo, and how did the name, so let's let's start with the name. It's hard to get going without talking about the name. Sure, a lot but, of people ask that question. <laughs> um, so Omgigo is an acronym. Mm -hmm. It stands for, oh my God, I gotta have one. Okay. And actually, if you can think that through your mind and spell it that way, um, that's how you can spell it. Right. And that's where I came from. Okay, that's pretty clever. Yeah. And uh, I'd say I have to have one as well. <laughs> so now uh, this company's sort of a new venture. Um, let's talk a little bit about how you got the company up and running. What was the, the big factor there to get things going? So uh, Colin and I met in January of this year, and um, I was introduced to his concepts about the GoGo. We thought it was a real cool idea, and uh, in February we incorporated it uh, in New Hampshire, where we're from. In May of this year, uh, we thought the best way to actually promote the the chair would be to go through a, a mechanism called crowdfunding, and to that end, we uh, did a campaign on a, a crowdfunding website called Kickstarter.com. Okay. And on that site, we were uh, able to talk about our the go-go the go -Go, and by um, selling advanced uh, renditions of the go-go to uh, a population of backers uh, we were able to raise money to continue development on the product okay excellent and that kind of got you to the point where you guys could actually go into full production and kind of refine the product that next level exactly uh, not just financially but uh, in terms of feedback from the community as well uh, we had a lot of feedback from not only the United States where we kind of expected everything to happen uh, but in Europe and Australia, um, there are a lot of people wanting to get one right. and a lot of inquiries about um, can it ship here, uh, can it be made with this type of steering wheel um, and we took all that into consideration and made a lot of revisions to the design and uh, most of that has been uh, uh, vetted out at this point. Okay. Uh, now on the Kickstarter, you're basically getting funding from outside sources, individuals. Um, I don't, you, know, you don't have to give me exact dollar amounts. What kind of money did you raise? How many people are involved in the company now? Sure. Uh, so basically, uh, our goal was to raise $10,000. That was to get uh, the CNC set up and to get a facility in place to do the final revisions. And we raised $13,000, so we, we covered our goal. 
and uh, we had backers from four different countries, United States, uh, Austria, Germany, and Australia. Okay. Now, you mentioned people from various different countries. Whenever I think sim rigs, it's hard to talk sim rigs without getting into distribution. Worldwide distribution is tough. This thing's heavy. So you guys are based in America. I'm assuming we can get them here in the USA. How are things working out beyond those country lines? Well, in that regard, uh, I'd like to reach out to the sim community because we need assistance in that regard. Uh, it is very expensive to ship it. Um, and to that regard, we're looking for partners in other countries who uh, we could partner with, um, send them the flat files to actually uh, do their own cutting and manufacture in their respective countries okay. uh, and, and, and sell from there. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about pricing. I know that the GoGo One is the model you have, but there are a few variations when I go to purchase one. Mm -hmm. You want to take us through the different price points? Sure. Uh, so the, the baseline is uh, an unassembled flat pack. We cut it into sheets that go right into a box and slide in. Uh -huh. We have um, additional materials, the screws, uh, uh, gears that go in as well. And, and all that package and assembly of all those parts and the instructions is a $4.99 price tag right now. Okay, okay. Um, we then offer a package which actually is fully assembled, uh, where we actually do all the construction uh, and uh, with a craftsman, and that is uh, on sale for seven forty nine right now. Okay. And then we offer an all in package, basically where we'll include the GoGo, uh, a cipher seat of your choice, and the G twenty seven installed, uh, and that is eleven forty nine right now. So basically, just plug that in your PlayStation, you're up and running. Exactly. Okay. Um, now the the colored model is that an option, or is that sort of a special order type thing? Right now, it's a special order. Uh, we hope to have it as an option. Um, the base GoGo uh, is offered. Um, in birch, uh, we do have this laminate. It's a little more expensive. There's different colors. Uh, we don't have that on our website just yet, but uh, it's kind of a special order. It's available for requests. We'll do it, um, and we hope to have it actually in its availability for someone to pick up online right away. That's great. That's a, you know, that's a great approach because that's one of the big problems in sim racing is distribution worldwide. And the other thing is just your whole approach, company-wise, is sort of a new look at things, new design, new uh, company approach. I love it. Thanks. Peggy 3. What makes a driver a champion? Determination, speed, courage. There are many drivers with these qualities, but they're not always enough to make a champion. A champion needs something more. When you push yourself to the limits, there is only one thing that can really make the difference. Control. This is your challenge. This is WRC3. Another great interview there, my friend. Thank you again. So, got to find out about the pricing, how this all came together. Really cool, really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, the other cool thing was having somebody come to our studio once again. So, that was a nice privilege. That Thanks, was. Guys. And to bring their product, their baby, and us to be the first to show it and review it. And it was an honor. So, thanks guys for uh, coming. Great meeting you both. But now it's time to review your product. <laughs> so uh, that's going to lead us to pretty much the pros and cons. Might like yeah. you know, like we said, the best way to describe you know what we thought is just to go into the pros and cons. So uh, why don't we start with the pros? And the first pro being, it's a rocking chair <laughs> that converts <laughs> into a sim rig. So that is really cool. Another pro is the cool design. I mean, the whole way this thing interlocks, the way it just kind of tucks together and goes together and there's not a lot of space underneath the chair when it's closed and actually that takes me to the next pro i was saying all that without even imagining the wheel and pedals on there now throw the wheel and pedals on that rig and then it still all tucks underneath under the chair and then it's just into the rocking chair i'm blown away i mean like i kept looking like how does it do that i'm i still don't know <laughs> i haven't really sat and looked at every it, it it's very intricate design and, and very cool how everything, you know, he mentioned using Google SketchUp to right. put it together, but it's like, I, I, maybe your mind works this way, but mine doesn't. I mean, where do you start? <laughs> I, that My mind doesn't work that way. Yeah, I mean, so props <laughs> to you, Colin, for just coming up with the idea and putting it into Google SketchUp and yeah. coming out with your, you know, speaking of which, where is the go-go? You know, I was wondering that. Normally we have the rig here with us. Where is the go-go is a good question. I know where the go-go is. I was kidding. It's at my place because 
Kind of took it over, put it in the man cave at my house. The thing, like, they left, and then so did you and the go-go. Well, we put it in the back of your truck. <laughs> but it was that quick. <laughs> yeah, I called, I'm like, Sean, I think we should review the go-go at my place just because. So, anyway. But that kind of points out, where is it? It's in your man cave. Yep. I mean, that's where it belongs. Yep. Next Pro, it can convert into a laptop station. So there's a, an extra attachment that you could purchase and converted, you know, you have to take your wheel deck off and stuff. Right. But converted into a nice laptop station. Yeah. Has absolutely. a cup holder as well. <laughs> you gotta like that. Yep. For long races. Yep. Another thing is that, believe it or not, this is actually ergonomically designed as a driving pod. So when you're getting in and out, it actually feels like you're getting in and out of a car. And then that seated position is very much like I'm accustomed to in my car. Yep. Next pro is that there's a few different options as far as purchase goes from, you know, the flat pack completely unassembled, which sounds like it's going to take quite a long time to <laughs> assemble 300 screws, I think he said. Yeah. So it's going to take you, you know, a bit of time to assemble it. We got ours luckily fully assembled. So, uh, but that's cool. So from flat pack, unassembled DIY, all the way to the fully assembled, ready to go kit. And then on top of that, you can buy your own seat. So, right. or if you have a seat ready, go to the junkyard, whatever it may be, you can put your own seat into that. So that right. can save you money or get one of the seats that, you know, that they have. Yeah, your recycled seat. Yep. Our recycled seat. Yep. Another pro on this one, and we talked about it before, because sim rigs are girlfriend killers. This is going to be girlfriend or wife proofed, or at least you're going to have a better chance. Yeah, I'm a little worried about you mentioning killing girlfriends. <laughs> I think what he meant by that is that you could blow your chances of having a girlfriend if, let's say, you bring one over on a first <laughs> date and she sees, what the heck is that? How do you You're... explain that? Yeah. How do you explain that to a new girlfriend? It's a so, girlfriend deal breaker. I think that the go. phrase gone wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's much better put. So, yeah, this is not a girlfriend deal breaker because... She'll honestly have no idea what it is yeah. in the rocking chair. Yeah, it just looks like a cool sports chair. And to add to that, my fiance Andrea loves the go go. And when I after I brought it home, she's like, "This is staying here, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's stay, staying in the man cave." Absolutely. So uh, yeah, it, it's definitely friendly for that. Uh, the next pro, it's comfortable and adjustable as a rocking chair. Yeah. So I, I like sitting in it and and all the different you know. You know what it's only missing? Huh. Oh, like a recline mode? The, well, in the Oh, with the foot. Yeah, because it does recline. It yes. just doesn't have the foot kick out part. But I saw one time you slid the seat all the way back, and you kind of put your heels up, and then it kind of made me feel like a little kid. But, you know, if I was going to be playing a little uh, normal uh, hockey, for example, gaming. I got that from Colin in his video. <laughs> he does exactly okay. that. So that's, that's where I learned that. I'm like, I got to try that. Yeah, it does that. Yep. And the last pro is actually something that, that I, we've watched experience over and over again. It's the wow factor. Because just in rocking chair, it doesn't look like a normal rocking chair. It looks like it does something. And then when you open it up into that rig, people's jaws hit the floor. Or vice versa. You got yeah. it sitting out of the sim ring and people are like, oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, it actually looks kind of big for a sim rig. Yeah. It, it is. But then you're like, but... Here, look at this picture. Or wait a second, <laughs> let me convert it into a rocking chair. They're like, whoa, yeah. that is really cool. So yeah, the wow factor is just through the roof. Through the thing. roof. So that's going to do it for the pros. Now let's move on to the cons. And the first one is with this design, it allows for actually a bit of wheel deck wobble. So it's a little bit of left and right wobble, and it can kind of pull at you as well. Yeah, it can pull. When we talk to them, they're maybe going to look into doing some kind of interlocking design once you push that wheel forward and and putting some pins through it or something. But right now, if you're under some load, that's definitely one of the cons. The, the whole wheel deck can come towards you in it. Honestly, we've talked about wheel deck wobble before, and there's the kind where it starts going and never stops, and then there's the kind that kind of just goes with the flow. Right. This is the go with the flow type. Honestly, yeah. I didn't see, let's back up a little bit. When we were all sitting here, we told the guys too. So Colin and, and Mark are no strangers to what we're talking about. Uh, we talked about the wheel deck wobble, but just sitting in the rig, not driving. And right. You doing the saw imitation. Um, I got home, started driving in it, and I didn't notice right. the wheel deck wobble at all, to be honest. And I was wheeling. I was doing some snow rally and some different stuff. And you saw, and you saw it yeah. sitting behind me. You're like, oh, that deck's wobbling. 
And I'm like, oh, it is? Yeah, you were completely surprised. Yeah, so it's that go with the flow wobble. It does have yeah, it, it's inherent in the design, but man, how are you not gonna make it wobble and then tuck all together exactly. like that? Exactly, that it's... many hinge point. Okay, the next con, only made for the Logitech G27 or G25 wheels. Actually, you can plug in a DFGT. I would guess you can fit a Thrustmaster F430 or even the Fanatic Porsche wheels or the CSR, but any bigger than that, no way. It's not right. gonna fit. And even though the DFGT, you're not gonna be able to bolt it down. Right. So, unless you Velcroed it in or whatever. So bottom line is, this, it's a con, the, one of the cons is, it's only made for the G27 or G25, but that is probably the most sold wheel out there, so. Absolutely. Another con, and this is something in the eye of the beholder, but it could take a long time to assemble. A con mentioned, God, what did he say, 40 hours? He I think so. 40 I hours? would guess Yeah. it would take a week to assemble that with all those pieces. This is a major jigsaw puzzle that you're gonna be putting together. More intricate than a jigsaw puzzle, because not only is it all interlocked, but then you got connecting pieces. Well, and this comes flat packed. Right. So, I don't know how much you're punching the pieces out. All of them. Yeah, yeah little tabs. You gotta pop them out like they're, yeah, so. That's gonna be kind of cool, but it's gonna take a long time. Yep. And next con is it comes unfinished. So I would have liked to have seen a painted option. Uh -huh. They do have an option where there's a laminate, which right. is the one we got in black, and they're gonna have multiple color options there too, but I would have liked to have seen just a painted version. Right. You know, an all black or all white or yeah. whatever, and comes painted. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know how much, the, there's a lot of pieces to paint though, so. Well, if you get the flat pack, you're going to paint yours probably. I mean, or it somebody bought will. it. And what's nice is it's going to be a sheet size, so you can kind of just roll over the whole sheet before you pop them out and not do all, you know, do it as one piece. Yep. But what about the edges? Well, like ours was unfinished on the edges, so I think that I want looks my cool. edges finished. Oh, okay. Well, then you're going to Honestly, that's another con for me. <laughs> yeah. I, I would have liked the edges finished to be okay. honest, cuz I think it just I mean, it I guess it adds to the design. Right. But I honestly cuz they have some of the areas filled with the white, mm -hmm. you know, so it's a white laminate with the black. Right. But then some, it's just still the bare bones. Right. So I, I think kind of in limbo there. Yeah. So I, I, that's a nitpicky con, I wouldn't <laughs> really say. And the last con, it's made of wood. Mm -hmm. So that could either be a con or a pro. Colin mentioned that it's environmentally friendly. So when you're done with it, you're going to... I don't know who would be throwing their rig into a landfill because usually they just get <laughs> handed down to the next guy. Yeah. But He's got a good point, you know, when it's all said and done, you can put it in your fireplace and burn it. Yeah, you could do that. Um, so, but now the con to the wood being, I think there might be some flex or maybe even some wear right. on some of those joints over time. Right. So that could be a con, but again, I don't, I don't know if that's truly a con because I haven't put that many hours into it. Right. At least to get to that point. So that's about it for the pros and cons list, and that gets us to the rev scale. So why don't you take the honors this time? Sounds good, since I'm the one that stole the rig. Um, <laughs> you know what? For the unique design, I mean, this is the first rocking chair that's converted into a sim rig that we've got. So that being said, for that in itself, a 9 out of 10. Now, for if you're big time into, into Gran Turismo, I'd say this rig's an 8. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you're a hardcore sim racer like us, and you're looking to have something like this, I'd say it's more like a seven, because it's really not meant for, first of all, for anything but a G25 or right. G27. You know, forget, a I'm, I'm looking like it's gonna be sitting back here. Forget attaching anything else to it. You right. know, no button boxes. You might right. be able to, but you know, this thing's meant to store. Yeah, yeah, you can't go just drilling holes in this one. Yep. So, do you agree with that assessment on the revs? I completely do. I think the the main thing here for me, or should I move into final thoughts, yeah. I guess? This is probably not the type of rig that we would normally do on our show. This is a gaming chair for a man cave that works as a sim rig. Works really well as a sim rig, but you know, normally we're working with more of the traditional hardcore sim rigs and things like that so i think it's definitely a step in a different direction not only for them as a company but for us as a review site so taking that into consideration i completely agree um and i i mean and you took it and put it in your man cave and i think that's where it really belongs you know it's like you have your your 46 inch tv you got your rocking chair you can be playing some grand theft auto or some hockey 
flip it out and be playing some Gran Turismo. And, and that's awesome and nothing else like it. Yeah, and that's honestly why I love it. And it's gonna stay in my man cave because it's perfect for that. Mm -hmm. For somebody like me that wants an extra rig for friends that come over or wants to convert it in for console racing, I don't right. wanna race on a console on my super rig. First right. of all, because I have triple screens and I'm running on that middle 22. Yeah. And like you said, I got it hooked up. It was a 42 actually, and I used that new R seat stand and pulled it right up. And man, you had fun racing in that oh, thing, yeah. didn't you? Oh, set yeah. up like that. It looks cool uh -huh. set up like that. Yeah. So yeah, I, I really like it. My fiance loves it. She, you know, she doesn't want it going anywhere. So yeah, I, I for somebody that looking is looking for something like this. Well, we've had a few friends over, and everybody who's seen it has the exact same reaction time after time. Yeah, and I either, I want one, or I know somebody that would want one. So, yeah. Colin, great idea, man. I think he really came up with a cool design, and mm -hmm. I, I, like I said, I don't know how your mind, obviously you're very design oriented, <laughs> but I just, I can't make my mind visualize something like that and make it all work. Well, we, we joke around, some of my nicknames, uh, Tetris, I like, interlocking things together, like packing a garage or a truck for moving. I couldn't have built a rig that, that did this kind of Tetris. So that's gonna wrap things up for our review of the Omgi Go. Mm -hmm. I got that right, right? Yeah, Omgi Go. Omgi Go, Go Go. Uh, I'd like to thank Colin and Mark for coming all the way from New Hampshire, by the way. They, they flew here, came, you know, hung out with us, set it up. What was cool about it too, we saw the passion that right. they both had for this whole project yeah. and we wish them nothing but the best. If you're interested in, in picking one up, you can go to their website. We got it here listed, omgigo.com. Tell them the guys at Inside Sim Racing sent you and uh, anything else before we go? No, just what a trippy rig. Yeah, definitely. Check out our site, isrtv.com. Check out all of our other sim rig reviews that we've done, over 20 this year. So. Uh, or all, over 20 altogether, I should say, and it just keeps, we keep adding to that. So, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. For Sean Cole, I'm Darren Ganji. We'll see you guys next time.